Hello everyone. I want to do some textbook problems using KSP. Both problems 1 and 2 are asking will a precipitate form? Yes or no? We are using KSP and whenever you're using KSP I think it is very prudent to write out the chemical reaction and also write out the KSP expression so we know exactly what to plug in to figure out, in this case, will a precipitate form. Hmm. Interesting. They're mixing two things. They are mixing K2SO4. plus BACL2 and oh here's a hint they gave us the KSP for barium sulfate so eventually we will be using this equation eventually BASO4 solid goes to BA2 plus aqueous plus sulfate 2 minus aqueous. Okay, I was a little stuck there. I was wondering what was going on, but KSP, chemical reaction, and the KSP expression we'll get to in just a bit. But they're going about this a little bit differently. They're not telling us exactly what the concentrations are of barium 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus. They're making us work for it. And when you combine these two, hopefully you will make that solid, barium sulfate, plus you're doing a double displacement, so you're switching dance partners. Uh, the barium is dancing now with the sulfate, the potassium is dancing with the chlorine, and the ratio of those L, uh, atoms are one to one. Um, you should remember that when you have a salt using a group 1 metal, like potassium, lithium, sodium, it's soluble. So this is definitely aqueous. So those are going to be spectator, sta <laughs> spectator ions, the potassium and the chloride. Anyway, oh, we got to balance. Uh, two potassiums, two KCLs, and I think we are good. I think we're good. Well, what do we need? We are going to assume that these are both aqueous. And whatever the concentrations are of these two, we can figure out the concentration of these two. I hope. Anyway, we have 900 milliliters of total volume, and we have, perfect, we have 0 0.0052. 0 0.0052 moles um, of K2SO4. For every mole of K2SO4, we get one mole of SO4 to minus. So this is still the same as 0 0.0052 mole of SO4 to minus. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And we are dissolving it in 900 milliliters. Let's take a look at the barium chloride. OK, great. They, they gave us um, 0 0.0010 moles of BaCl2. And again, barium is a one-to-one -one ratio with its salt, in this case, 0 0.00. 1 O mole of barium 2 plus. Now the total volume is 900 milliliters. So 900, oh, 0 0.900 0 .00 liters gives you your concentrations. You're multiplying. No, no, no. You're dividing. Whew. 0 0.0052 divided by 0 0.9. A lot of places where we can go wrong want to be very precise 
and that's now a molarity of SO4 2 minus. Now this one is kind of sloppy, 0 0.0010 divided by 0 0.9 and here we have 0 0.001111 molarity or molar of BA2 plus. So literally that what go, what, that's what's going into the expression. Now when they ask will a precip precipitate form, what are they really asking? They're really asking, does the reaction go uh, more to the forward direction or more to the reverse direction? Okay, because right now we can assume that this is not at equilibrium. Okay, not at the KSP. So do you see what I'm hinting at? We want to do a Q evaluation. Is QSP uh, equal to, greater than, or less than KSP? So we're not writing the equilibrium solubility product constant expression. Uh, we're going to take the Q analog of it. But it's still the same thing. It is, now we're looking at this equation right here. Right? It is the concentration of Ba2 plus times the concentration of SO4 2 minus. Neither of these have a coefficient. All right, because if barium 2 plus had a coefficient of 2, 2 Ba2 plus, um, then you would square that concentration. So we're almost there. I want to give ourselves more significant, more significant figures than what we expect at the end or that we should put in the end, just so we don't accidentally round ourselves out of a correct answer. You know, too much rounding um, or rounding to less significant figures can cause you to get a wrong answer. Equals 0 0.005778 times 0 0.001111. I got, oh man, okay, let me get into scientific notation. I got 6.42 times 10 to the minus 6. That is QSP. I just want to double check my answer. Okay, awesome. That's QSP. Our observation is that QSP is, uh oh. So our KSP for barium sulfate is 1.1 times, oh. It's much, much larger than KSP. What does that mean? It means that the product side is too large. And if your product side is too large, what happens? You shift to the left. Oh, we're shifting towards barium sulfate solid. So our conclusion is, therefore, it will shift to the left and more importantly precipitate forms because that's what the question is asking for. Now if QSP was less than KSP you know what that means? Look at your expression for KSP. It's the same thing but I want to use this one specifically. If your QSP is too low, that means your concentrations of your ions are not high enough to cross a threshold to make product. Oh, sorry, to make precipitate. Okay. That side is too low. That side is too low. Okay. Um, so yeah, there, there could be a case, right? where you will not form solid and this could literally be zero zero amount okay that's kind of tricky because we don't normally see that normally in your equilibrium exp expression you have both uh, products and reactants but because our reactants are solid it doesn't show up in the expression and hence it doesn't matter if BASO4 is zero it can be zero
precipitate forms for problem number one. Let's try problem number two and let's see if it's the same format. They're still asking us to figure out if a precipitate will form. This thing keeps focusing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Do you want to try this on your own? Think about what we did uh, before. We had some work to do before we could actually use the expression because they didn't straight up tell us the concentrations of barium 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus. They actually gave us uh, salts of the two and we're supposed to figure out um, figure out uh, what salt is made and what is solid and maybe even if there was a coefficient or not. Okay, let us tackle this one. If you want to give it a shot, go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're done. Okay, again, I know the trick. The trick is realized they gave us a KSP for this. And so ultimately, I am going to analyze with a KSP expression this chemical reaction. Ah, this is different than before. We have a coefficient of 2 plus sulfate, oh, another sulfate, um, aqueous. Okay. Should we write our expression here? Why don't we do that right now? KSP equals concentration of AG plus squared. Oh, so that term is squared. We didn't see that last time. SO4 2 minus. So the deal is um, we are going to ask ourselves based on the concentrations or the amounts is QSP, the conditions that they gave us, equal to greater than or less than KSP. And then we can figure out if the reaction shifts uh, to the left or shifts to the right. Now here's the deal. I don't know those concentrations. Here we have AgNO3, um, 0. Point, should I draw the chemical equation? Let me draw the chemical equation of these two reacting first. AgNO3, I reminded you of your solubility rules that salts of the first group metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, they're all soluble. Remember that nitrates, salts of nitrates, are all soluble as well. No exceptions. Plus K2SO4, potassium, hence this is all aqueous as well, goes to switch dance partners. We have silver. We definitely have silver sulfate because that's the KSP they gave us. Okay, yeah, we do have silver sulfate, and that's uh, aqueous. No, 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 that's solid. Plus potassium nitrate. Oh, definitely ion, ionizes 100% or close to 100%. You have potassium and you have nitrate. You want to balance, and we have uh, two potassiums, two nitrates there. The two go here. Oh yeah yeah. Mm. Oh yeah yeah. Oh my goodness. I forgot the two here. Good. Um we gotta remember you gotta balance each chemical compound, make sure that these are all neutral salts, and then you balance the whole chemical equation. I I forgot that too, because it's AG plus and SO4 2 minus, so you need two silver ions. Okay, the moles. AgNO3. We have 0 0.02625 moles of AgNO3, but that's the same as 0 0.02625 moles of Ag plus. So we don't we don't have any concern about this two. Literally Okay, whatever this coefficient is, it doesn't matter. They're telling us that we have this many moles of silver nitrate. 
Now, that will have to be dissolved in this, do you get what they're saying? You already have this solution right here. And then you're adding AgNO3 to that solution. Solid AgNO3. So that is our final volume, actually. Uh, 0 0.825 liters. Well, let me take care of that now, actually. 0 0.02625 divided by 0.825 to get the molarity. 3. 0.18 times, uh, let's give ourselves more digits, 1.8, um, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 molar of Ag plus. Okay. Now your potassium sulfate, they already gave you a molarity. 0 0.0063 molar of K2SO4. And the thing is, um, that's already in the full volume, 0 0.825 liters. We're not adding more water. So that concentration is good to use. Now we want to use sulfate, but it's one sulfate ion for every one molecule of K2SO4. So this also is the same, SO4, 2 minus. OK, that's it. Those are your two concentrations that we're going to plug in. So we're going to plug in that and this into what? Into the QSP. Now, don't forget, it's written right there. The silver ion is squared equals Zero, whoops, no, this, this number right here. 3.1818 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. And then the sulfate molarity is not squared. It's just taken directly. And we are wondering, is that Q going to be greater than or less than our KSP? Okay, I got everything on the screen. Um, let me do the calculations. I have that saved, that concentration of silver ions. Square it equals times 0 0.0063 equals 6.38 um, times 10 to the minus 6. And we take a look at the KSP of AgSO4, Ag2SO4. Okay, I did square it. I did square it. And we realize that QSP is less than, and you don't see what I'm pointing at, right there. And now you don't see what I'm pointing at up here. Right there. QSP is less than KSP, meaning that QSP is too small, um, too much reactants, or not enough products for QSP to be a KSP. Remember, you know, the equilibrium will shift until Q is uh, equal to K. So what does that mean? We don't have enough products. We are not going in the reverse direction. We need more products. You are shifting to the right. You are shifting to the right. The question is, Will a precipitate form? You know, in this case, our we do let's say we do form a solid, you know, but you're in enough water that it will dissolve and it will give us all ions. It will give us that many sulfate ions and this many silver ions. And I know that they're ions because your 
um, when you do your Q expression, that number is not big enough. That number, do, that number does not equal K. So there is a motivation to keep adding more because the product of these two ions does not equal the KSP. I said that kind of stupidly. Um, it means that it's not saturated, right? You, you could still dissolve more, actually, of this because you're still under... Um, when you do the QSP, QSP is still less than KSP. The, the bottom line is, yeah, precipitate will not form. It is too dilute. These ion concentrations are too small. Precipitate will not form. It will only form if you find out that because of the Q is too big that it shifts to the left okay because initially like when you mix these two in these concentrations initially you actually don't even have precipitate you have no precipitate okay and that means that even though it will shift to the right you gotta actually add more reactant to get Q to be equal to K I belabored the point we have one example where precipitate does form okay, because Q is greater than K and we have one situation where precipitate will not form because Q is less than K.